Hello to parents and carers of our Year 7s. This is Miss Daniels, Head of Year 7, and I've just put this presentation together just now that your child has been here for the first term and a half, just to go through some things that you might not be aware of and just to keep you up to date on our current Year 7s. So we'll go through homework, key people, a day in the life, rewards and activities and events that are on and forthcoming events. So we have been very, very impressed with our year sevens. They have had a really positive start to their high school journey. It hasn't been easy for them, obviously, over the past two years with COVID. And to think that they were year four when they were last really, truly properly in school. So they've, you know, they've had to get used to wearing masks in high school. And but they've they've coped with everything and they've done really well and we're very, very happy with the positive start that they have made. I'm going to go through the key people. Obviously, they are your child's form tutor. You will know who they are by now, but they are the first port of call for you yourself and obviously um, for the pupil. So as I said, I'm Miss Daniels and I'm head of year seven. And we also have Miss Bolton, who is a pastoral manager, who is connected to our year sevens as well for all of the matters. So our tutors, our children are split into houses. So we have 7H and 7A who are Red House and they're with Mrs. Carnell and Miss Sadler. Green House is 7R, Mr. Turley and Mrs. Bolster Woods for 7T. Green House 7F is Mr. Douglas and Miss Brett is 7D and then we have blue which is 7S Mr Merriweather and 7C Mr Lybird. We've always had houses here at Hartford and it's always been a real positive part of the school. I used to be head of, of Red House before we went to heads of year and it means that every child had a sense of belonging and also it means that we can have interform uh, into house activities as well. So obviously they wear the coloured tie, which denotes which um, house they are in. And they are the people that your child should go to first if they need to sort out any issues. And also the ones that you should contact if you have any uh, queries as well. Homework. The amount of homework that children get in high school might be quite different to primary school. Some children will struggle with organisational skills and recording things down in their planner. And that's where you will be really key in helping with that. So all pupils have a planner or a handbook and inside there, that should be their normal school timetable. So we're on a two weekly timetable at school. It should be written in their planners. You might have a copy on the fridge at home and a child would usually have a paper copy of it in their blazer as well. Pupils also have a homework timetable that relates to their daily subjects so they know what homework to expect on what day. That means that they can plan a little bit more for that. All pupils will be on Google Classroom. Some homework might get posted on there and the teacher will tell them it's on Google Classroom. All the children have all of the codes and they should all be belonging to each subject Google Classroom by now. They might also use websites such as Hegarty for Maths and Times Tables Rockstars, Seneca, Active Learn. So some subjects put their homework on there as well. Now the planner should be checked weekly, if not daily, by yourselves. So every child should be writing down their homework in their planner, which gets set in the lesson and the day that that is due in. If you look at that daily, then you'll know what your child has been set and when it's for, and you can help with the organization. You should also be signing it on a weekly basis and their tutor will check their planners on a weekly basis and ensure it has been signed. Now to help out with this and the homework that they get, we have a homework club every night and that is held in Veritas Library until 4 p.m. And that's run by the librarian, Mrs. Lee. So that's in our new building. Now, every tutor has at least two year tens who have been chosen to be buddies. And they've been with your child 
since the first day in September when they arrived at school. So they should know them pretty well by now, by now. And I know the buddies are getting to know them really well too. And they support the tutor and the activities that go on in tutor time. And they support everybody within that form as well. They can be given certain pupils to help out with things like their planning, their organisation, their homework, their equipment. But they also support the year sevens at lunchtime. So we have the canopy areas where children can eat their lunch. And the buddies have a table there and they will sit there. They have a little rotor. And they sit there and any year seven can go and chat to them, talk to them. They're there to keep an eye on the year sevens as well. And they also run a rotor and go up to homework club in the Veritas library. So they, they sign in, they will circulate around the year sevens, asking if anybody needs help with their homework. They'll sit with them and help them to do it. There's lots of computers in there as well. Um, and they, or they will, you know, check the child's planner and help them to organise themselves as well. So it's really, really important that you obviously help with that. And um, some children find it difficult to sort out their school bag on a daily basis with all the different lessons that they have. And some of them do find it difficult to sometimes find a quiet space at home or they want to keep home and school a little bit separate. So they'd like to go there and get their homework done. So when they get home, the time is their own. They don't have to book into homework club or anything like that. They, they just turn up. So a day in the life then in terms of what happens with the pupils and tutor time. So in the morning, pupils go straight to lesson one. However, we all meet as a, as a whole school on the schoolyard in the morning, we all have our different zones. So the year sevens know where the zone is. I am always with yellow and blue, and Mr. Lee is always with green and red. So they line up in their zones in the morning, and then we send them off on their way year by year. So I see them and they can see me first thing in the morning on the yard. So if there's any issues or anything they want to discuss, they can pop up and see me then. Then off they go to their lessons. We are on staggered breaks and staggered lunches um, still. Then at half past two, they'll have tutor times. So they have tutor time every day, but it's the last half an hour of the school day. So on a Monday, we always have assembly. I'm always there. And then we have people from outside of school coming to lead those acts of worship once a week. We have pets and we have careers on a Tuesday. Wednesday's well-being, Thursday they'll do literacy and Friday it's thought of the week or they could go to chapel and that's sort of rota currently because of different years going on different Fridays. So there's lots and lots of things for them to do in tutor time. It is seen as an extra half an hour lesson at the end of the day. They do have tasks to do. Some children will lead some of the pet sessions and the well-being sessions with the tutor. And again, the buddies are there on certain days to support with that as well. So rewards, rewards and sanctions. So every lesson, each pupil is given a score for their attitude to learning. So a one is what we're expecting. Everything's fantastic. They've done what has been required. They've had the right equipment, homework is in on time and they've engaged with the lesson. A two will mean that obviously one of those things is missing. And then a three is the worst score you can get. And obviously there would be a sanction for that as well. We also have achievement points. So year sevens have collected a huge amount of achievement points, which is fantastic. So they can be for whatever a member of staff wants to give them for. So it might be an excellent piece of homework, engagement in the lesson, kindness to somebody else. And our year sevens are doing the Caritas Award. You will have seen that they've got um, a chart in their planners and they tick off the extra challenges and they are going for their bronze, silver, and gold awards in the, for the Caritas as well. So they will be receiving certificates for those when they hit those awards. When children do get achievement points, 
a text will go home and it will say your child has received an achievement point. If you want to know more information then for what subject it was, then that's where you go into the School Gateway app and it will tell you there. Very soon, you'll be able to view any behaviour points that your child might have picked up as well. So that'll be really key in helping them to get back on track and having that discussion with them at night. What happened here? What can you do right? Making sure if it was, a, you know, some equipment that was missing, right? Have we sorted that then for the next day? Is your pencil case sorted? Do you have your homework? Anything like that? So that, that's going to be crucial in helping your child to not pick up any more behaviour points. And obviously, attendance is key. We know that attendance and achievement go hand in hand. Children have to be in school to learn. And that greatly, so if they haven't been in that greatly, you know, can affect their achievement. We understand children who have been off um, for COVID and that hasn't been counted in with their attendance percentage. So attendance is key and we, we reward really good attendance as well. And then as a head of year, at least once every half term, I ask my tutors, that each child records their attendance percentage, their achievement and their behaviour points in their planner. So you can see how well your child is doing. So rewards so far, what have we had? So from September to Christmas, there was 83 of them who had 100% attendance. Everyone received a certificate for that term. And then two pupils at random were chosen from a raffle who won Amazon vouchers. The best house attendance was blue. So we did that one at Christmas as a house and they had between them, between S and C 97.6%. Best conduct points. Now conduct points, that means you have your achievement points and any behavior points are taken from the achievement points, which then gives an actual conduct point. So as a house, that was 7H and 7A won the best conduct points. Reward trips. Currently, we aren't able to offer the reward trips because of COVID restrictions, but we have lots of reward trips that we've, we've had in the past. We usually have one at Christmas and we usually have one at summer. So hopefully they will be coming back pretty soon. So January to February, so this little half term that we've just had has been quite busy really for us. So this half term, we were celebrating Chinese New Year. So we ran a Chinese New Year competition for all year sevens. Everyone who entered has received a box of chocolates. And then we've selected some winners and they've received some more goodies, all themed around red, with that being the good luck colour. And they'll be, they'll, will have had their goodies this week. But all year sevens, I arranged for all year sevens to receive a fortune cookie, Chinese sweets and chopsticks if they wanted them. And tutors were sent a presentation on the etiquette and the use of chopsticks as well. 7H, Mrs. Carnell's form, won afternoon tea. And that was held on Wednesday, the 16th of February. So that was for the, they had the best attendance since September, 98.4%. And so they've had hot chocolate, squirty cream, marshmallows, and cakes made by the canteen. So they've had that um, this Wednesday afternoon, which was lovely. 66 pupils have received a voucher to use in the canteen at break for having 100% attendance from September to February, so that's excellent. And then Mr. Douglas's 7F, they've won tubs of sweets because they have the least amount of behavior points as well since January to February. So we've had lots of rewards this half term and there'll be more rewards coming their way as we lead up to Easter. So forthcoming events. Trove Tuesdays on the 1st of March this year. So I'm going to arrange a pancake session so they can come and make pancakes in the food tech room. And I think we're going to be charging 50p for that and we'll supply all the ingredients and their sugar and lemon and Nutella. There will be limited numbers for this. So it will be 
the, the first ones that sign up. If it is super busy, then we might be able to offer it on the Monday as well, because places will be limited. It'll be roughly about 15 per session. I'm also going to run an Easter competition. Again, that's an open creative competition. So they can take part in that like they did for the Chinese New Year one. I'll be doing an Easter egg hunt where they'll have to go and find certain eggs in classrooms, not literally an egg, there will be, there will be a picture. And that I think we'll try and make a fundraiser for one of our school charities as well. And then there'll be the chance to an afternoon tea for the best attendance and this time the best achievement points as well. And that will be Easter themed. We'll also have extra prizes for 100% attenders and children who've had the best attitude to learning scores as well. So be involved. The more you put into school and the more you are involved, the more you enjoy being here. So we have charity council and sports reps in each form. So your child might be representative for their form and they should have a badge with that as well. So they need to do the leading. So when we are saying that we need to raise money for charity, the charity reps should lead that so they can talk to the form and say, what would you like to do? What fundraising ideas have you got? And then they'll take it back to the council and then the council reps will decide whether that can happen or not. Sports reps get involved in inter-house competitions and make sure they've got teams put together. And that'll be really crucial as we head into sports day as well. So we have a school executive council as well, which is made up of year 10s. And they've presented an assembly this week. And they've asked for pupils to get involved with a new eco group that they're doing at school. And I know that a lot of children are involved in those sorts of things at primary school. And it's a fantastic opportunity. They are looking at recycling, they're looking at planting of, of trees and flowers and bushes, having reflective areas for children as well. So I would really love our year sevens to get involved with that. And the Exec Council also highlighted the two school charities. This is the two that the whole school, not just year sevens, are supporting. So one, the national charity is Young Minds, which is crucial. Um, all the time talking about mental health. So that's, a, that's a really, really important one. And also the other is the international charity, which is a Harambe Schools Partnership, which is in Uganda. They've already had an assembly on that a couple of weeks ago. A lady came in to talk to them about that and show them some of the, the schools and the children that they've helped in the past. Extracurricular clubs, there are sporting clubs on. There are ones to do with technology and computing, drama, and the theatre workshops, music. I think there's going to be a baking club um, set up again as well. So usually you would look at the website to see what is on in each day. And it's not the same as primary. You don't have to book onto those things. You just turn up. The only one that you would have to book onto is obviously if we do the pancakes and also the baking club, because they can only have a certain amount of children on those. So Menai, Menai is looming. It is April the 20th to the 22nd. Children will come into school in their own clothes on that day. They will be asked to bring their school bag with them and everything they need because they'll be in school up until lunchtime. And obviously they'll bring their suitcase in with them that morning as well. We leave after school, uh, we leave after lunch on the Wednesday to get to the Conway Centre, approximately about four o'clock in the afternoon. They will then spend all of Thursday and all of Friday morning doing certain activities that they sign up to do. So a letter will go out with the kit list and medical forms that must be filled in and sent back. But I've included the kit list on this presentation so you can have a little look just in case you want to start getting things during February half term. However, it is old comfortable clothes, old trainers. It is 
none of their fancy stuff that they've got that's all the, these lovely named clothes that they've got it's all old clothes old trainers things that they don't mind if they are ruined and they end up having to be thrown away if they are doing a water-based activity obviously that they're, they're given um what they need by the center for that so just the essentials so old clothes the waterproof coat a plastic drinks container so they can fill up with water we will be having a disco on the thursday night so clothes if they want to dress up for, for the disco on thursday it is advisable for them to bring a carrier bag so they can bring their lovely dirty wet clothes home to you and we've said a small amount of pocket money between five and ten pounds will be sufficient we are in the middle of nowhere in wales so there's a little shop at the Conway Centre. It doesn't sell very much, so but so that's why we say just a small amount of pocket money. And children will not be allowed to bring their phones with them. And we obviously will have phones there that we can contact you on, but children will not be allowed to bring their mobile phones with them and things like smart watches. And that, you know, that's obviously from a safeguarding point of view, but also things are things like that are really, really costly. Plus, we want them to be engaged in what they're doing. They're there for team building and bonding. Their form tutors will be there. Their buddies will be there. Myself and Miss Bolton will be with them. It's about making memories, meeting new people, making new friendships and just bonding as a tutor group. And as a year seven, they've missed out on having these school residential trips over the last two years. So I know they're really looking forward to it. So there'd be no time to be on their phones anyway. They're gonna sit, they're gonna to talk to each other. They're going to be involved um, in outdoor activities and indoor activities. So they will not need them at all. So contact in school. If you have a subject issue, and it might be regarding homework, then please use the child's handbook planner just write in inside there to the member of staff directly and ask your child to show it to that member of staff when they next have the lesson. If there's something else regarding a subject issue, then you can ask your child for the initials of their teacher, which are on their timetable. And then you just put at heartfortie.co.uk in front of it. So you can see me there, for example, I'm E Daniels. So if you needed to contact me, it would be edaniels at heartfortie.co.uk. Any other issues, contact the form tutor. And obviously the form tutor's names are on the start of this presentation. And that would be in the first instance, or you can email, you can email them in, or you can ring school reception and the lady on reception will email the member of staff and let them know you've phoned and that you need a phone call back. Any SEN issues? then you contact Mr. Lee for those. So I hope that has been a little bit informative. I know it's so different when children are primary and, and go to secondary, you might feel you've not got that same contact point when they've had that teacher for nearly all the subjects for the whole of the year. But we are there for your children. And like I said, I'm out on the zone every morning, but they can find any pastoral manager in the in the pastoral hub and all children know where that is so if they need any help or they have any worries or queries about anything they know they can go to the pastoral hub at any time during the day um, most of them know where to find me in my teaching classroom as well so i hope so we're really really pleased with how the children have settled They've done fantastically well. They really, really have. And I'm really looking forward to the next half term leading up to Easter and then the final one leading up to summer. So there's loads of things for them to get involved in, loads of rewards coming their way. And just encourage them and support them with that. And thank you very much for, for the support that you do give us. It's really appreciated. Okay, thank you.